everyone. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, uh, Monday through Friday. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so tonight we are going to start up a little tatting pattern. So this was recommended by Anne over on uh, Facebook and YouTube. And this is Beth Z's Tat Chat Shuttle. So it's supposed to actually look like a little uh, tatting shuttle, <laughs> kind of the same shape. So we are gonna start that today. I've already wound my thread onto uh, two bobbins. I have green is gonna be my bobbin number one, or shuttle, I keep saying bobbin. Uh, I've wound them onto shuttles. Uh, green is gonna be my shuttle number one and pink is gonna be my shuttle number two. So that is the plan. I'll kind of quickly go over how I measured. I did take video though, so I think I'm gonna make like a short little video on how I actually kind of figured out how much thread to put on the shuttles. Uh, so we'll go over that and we'll get started on this and I will be doing a split ring for the first time. So I think that'll be kind of fun. So always learning, always trying to learn something new with these crafts. So, all right, let's get going. All right, hello, hello everyone. So I'm gonna shimmy sham you down over yonder. Okay, so I already have uh, uh, my shuttles wound. Hold on a sec, there we are. And uh, we are gonna go through this. So I, I, I did a gauge. <laughs> so anyway, I could have just wound these shuttles as, you know, super full and they are pretty full but i think it's kind of fun uh, um oh i didn't put that blog post up but there is a, a blog post uh that someone wrote on how to estimate how much thread to put on your shuttle and uh, so i did all that math so i figured out how many stitches based on the pattern how many stitches are stitched with one shuttle how many are stitched with the other and uh, i just kind of added them up so like around 290 five stitches with the green shuttle shuttle number one 192 with shuttle number two and then i uh, um, did a little gauge on how much thread i use when i stitch so i stitched uh 10 pieces okay so this is gonna be like a little quick but i did do a video of it and i'll i'll be posting that uh, probably tomorrow so I'll, I'll get into this a little bit more, but I, I measured 12 inches and I marked it with like a little black mark on my thread. And then I stitched 10 double stitches with that thread. Um, so what I'm trying to figure out is how much thread does it take for me to make like one stitch? So I can then calculate, how, you know, how many, if it takes that much thread for one stitch and I have 295 stitches, then how much thread in inches and feet is that? So I did 10 stitches on here and then I subtracted what was left of the 12 inches um, from the 12, which gave me uh, four inches, four and three quarters inches. So it basically takes four and three quarters, uh, 4.75 inches of thread to make 10 stitches. That's how, how much thread it took me to take um, these 10 stitches here. And so therefore it's 0.475 inches for one stitch. <laughs> so then I took the number of stitches that we figured out, like I counted them all up. Um, I took that and multiplied it my, by my 0.475 and got 158 inches for uh, shuttle number one, which is about 13 feet and two inches. And then uh, um, for shuttle number two, it ended up being like 91.2 inches, which is about seven feet, seven inches. And then I added a, a couple extra feet onto both of them. First of all, because I'm paranoid. And second of all, um, that doesn't account for all the little picos everywhere. So I needed to add extra for the picos and for the, the core thread that goes through through all of it. Ooh, speaking of that, maybe I don't have enough on here. We'll see, that's that's gonna be the challenge. I did put extra, uh, ugh, but we'll see. And if we don't, then I'll just add thread. It's kind of a fun experiment uh, for me. And you know, this took forever to kind of add up and do. I could have just loaded both shuttles up and just been done, but whatever, I still think it's kind of fun. 
So, all right, let's start out. So this pattern, I did put a link on uh, um, YouTube and Facebook, and this, this replay will be up on um, YouTube. Uh, so if you needed to see the replay of this. Um, but yeah, so the, the instructions are up there. I'm gonna just kind of keep this to the side here. And all right, so I got two shuttles. Uh, green is gonna be my shuttle one. So that's gonna be my main shuttle. Okay, so we're gonna actually start here. Uh, so this is a split ring and this is a split ring. And then we go around uh, clockwise over the whole thing and get back there for, at the beginning. So, all right, I need to actually start with three chains. And to start on a chain, I'm gonna unwind a little bit of number two there wind it up around my finger here. Oh, the other thing I think I might try tonight is uh, the <laughs> more traditional way of holding a shuttle. I don't know if I'm gonna do this the whole night though, because I can already tell I might have some issues. So I've been holding my shuttle with um, my, oh gosh, how have I been doing it? Oh yeah, so I've been holding it with my uh, third and uh, um, my thumb and my third finger and then holding the thread up with my pointer finger and then this is the thread I've been working on. The more traditional way of doing that is holding it between your first finger and thumb and then having your third finger as the one that's up. So I thought I'd give that a try tonight. Uh, there's no really <clears throat> no real wrong, right or wrong reason or like way to do it. This I think is more what you'll see traditionally. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna stick with it though because I have kind of weird finger things. Like when I bring my my uh, finger and thumb together, I can get some like pain in my thumb. So I don't know if that's if any of you guys get that, but I don't get that when I do it with my uh, third finger and up. That's not quite right. I don't know. However, I hold it that way. Um, so I don't know. I might switch back, but I thought just as a challenge, I'd try it this way. Okay, I'm already doing it wrong though. I need it on, there we go, <laughs> there we go. All right, so to start, I'm gonna actually start with the second half of a double stitch. So over under and a flip, and that's gonna give me like this big kind of ring. That's gonna go away. Oh, see now I already can't get my brain wrapped around holding it this way. Um, but anyway, so this is going to go away. It's just there for now because um, we're starting in a chain. So some people put like a little safety pin here, but I, I googled, um, watched some YouTube videos. This is another way to, to do it is just to do like the second half of a stitch. And now we can go on and do our three chain stitches normally. So that's under over, flip. So a chain stitch, I guess we haven't really talked. It's been a while since we've tatted. Uh, there we go, there's our first stitch. Um, a chain stitch is basically more double stitches, but it's done um, on the second shuttle and we're not making a ring. So we're not making a ring around our hand. We're just letting it kind of be like one long line and we're stitching with that. And that's just called a, a chain. So I just did one. Uh, two, I'm already <laughs> second guessing my decision on uh, holding the thread this way. It already feels so weird, but I figured, you know, I'll learn how it's done traditionally and then I can make, <laughs> like, practice both ways, right? So that's why I like, you know, continental knitting, knitting and like throwing knitting, like learning both of them. All right, so I did the three chains. Now I can pull and that original loop is gonna go away and I'm just left with the three three chains there, which is what I want. That's, that's this funny little uh, three chain area up there. All right, Marcia says I'm geeking out over, <laughs> geeking out, Lynn, I love that you did all the math. Yeah, I mean, and really, you know, it's about the same amount on, on each shuttle, but it's just kind of fun. 
Um, all right, so we're gonna do a split ring now. So we need to do a split ring. So this is my first time doing a split f split ring. Uh, we're gonna be doing four, it's basically a ring, like how we've done rings before. So I'm gonna do it with my shuttle number one. So I'm gonna wrap around my hand. Ooh, I keep cutting out of frame here. I'm gonna scooch you guys over just, just a tick. There we go, I think that's a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna wrap around. I might have to switch back. <laughs> we'll see. But here, so I, I've wrapped around my whole hand. And I'm going to unwind a little bit more because I need more slack. So it's four on one side and four on the other. So instead of doing a ring, so usually a ring, you come back to the beginning. But we actually want to come at, up at the top. So like if... If I'm drawing a ring, normally a ring would be like a circle, right? And you'd, you'd end at like where you began. But we actually want to end up on the other side. So to do that, we're actually going to make half the ring with one shuttle and half the ring with the other. So we, we will have started there and ended there. So that's, that's kind of the difference between a normal ring where you start and end in the same place versus a split ring. So we're going to do one half with one shuttle and one half with the other. And that will get us... So basically we're going from here to there. And then we'll do another one here where we go here to there versus, you know, coming back around at the circle. So that's that's the idea of a split ring. So we're going to start, we're going to do four double stitches on side number one. So one, two, I don't know how to hold it this way, so <laughs> it's it's weird for me. Okay, make this a little bit bigger. Um, so, and then for these double stitches, again, we're just going, I'm going under my thread and then over. And then we're kind of going through, making that loop, flipping it over, then over, under. I have some videos where I kind of go over the flipping the knot and, um, and the double stitch. I would check those out. I don't think I'm going to spend too much time on those tonight just so I can see how far I can get on here. All right, so that's four. So four double stitches on that side. So now I'm gonna actually just kinda toss this one behind. So toss uh, shuttle number one over the top. And now I'm gonna come with shuttle number two. So we, we were making the, the um, stitches on this side of the ring, but now I'm gonna make it on this side of the ring. There we are. And I actually have to do it in reverse to, um, in a couple different ways. So I'm going to, instead of going under over, I'm going to start by going over. Ooh, let's, let's click this in one more time. There we go. I'm going to start by going over under. So over under first. And we're also not going to flip our loop. I'm going to just slide it on down. There we go. So that was over under. Now I got to go under, oops, under over. And I'm, I'm not flipping again. Ooh, that's so, that's a weird feeling. I haven't done that before. Oh gosh, and I'm so tempted to switch back to my old hand positioning, but I'm gonna try and keep up with it. All right, so that was one. So again, we're doing this backwards, over, under. I'm gonna slide it up and then under, over. No flipping, slide it up, that's two. I gotta keep thinking about it. Three. And four. Yep. <laughs> I keep, I keep, like my brain keeps, uh, like starts spinning. All right. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, four, so there you go. So you can kind of see we have four double stitches on one side and four on the other, and now we can just close this ring. And to do that, we pull on our original, our original shuttle. And all that thread will just kind of get sucked up. And we just keep pulling. And, oh, there we go. So uh, instead of the ring, instead of us starting and ending at the same spot, we've we've kind of come up on the other side. So that's good. 
So that is a split ring. Yay! So that was the first time I've tried that before. Jeez, our little, <laughs> little chain at the end is being funny. We'll have to starch him in place um, sometime. All right, I just want to make sure that my knots are on the outside. There we go. Okay, so there, there we go is the little split ring, split ring there, and then our little nubbin on the end, <laughs> our decorative nubbin. I'm just trying to pull that in place a little bit. All right, so that's that was my first ever split ring, you guys. <laughs> so let's let's try that again. So we actually this next part is another big split ring, and there's actually an error um, in between the uh, um, pattern versus versus here. And I think I'm going to do it how the pattern says, because I think it, it's going to actually look cuter. Oh, thanks, Kay. I, this is fun. So I am learning. I'm learning to tat. I am pretty, pretty new, but I love just kind of like jumping into things I don't know. So I posed the question, like I didn't understand these instructions. So I posed the question on TikTok, um, I don't know, last week or, or something. And uh, this is, uh, gave me, a, all of y'all gave me a whole education on what a split ring was. So that was awesome. And now, now I'm actually getting to try it. Oh, Marcia says, wow, that split ring is, is pretty cool. Yeah, what's neat about it is you could just keep making split rings and you'd have like, almost like a bracelet, right? Because cause you're, 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 you're ending on the opposite side. So if you imagine like a bunch of circles, a bunch of rings where you keep ending up on the opposite side, you'll just have a bunch of rings in a row. Um, so that'd be a great way to do, to do a, like a bracelet or a necklace or something versus, you know, our normal, like little snowflakes that we keep going around and around in a circle. So, all right, let's do, let's do the next one. Oh, so here's the error. So the next one is 12 Pico 3. Um, so the, the three, so it's actually 12 and then there's a little Pico, which is that little, it's a loop like this. And then there's three more. So that loop, that Pico, is getting attached to something else later, so you can't really see that. In the photo, there's an extra one, extra little bloop right there. So that's a Pico. That is not in the instructions. And I actually think it might look cuter without. So there's actually another version of this um, over here. You see how it's all nice and smooth? This is a version without all the tiny little picos. So all of these little decorative bloops, those are all picos. And we'll go over that in a sec here. Um, so we have options. So we can have like the nice clean one, which I actually kind of like, or this one with the little decorative little picos all over it. I'm gonna go with the Pico one just because I'm gonna be adding it to my tatting bag. This is where I keep all my my tatting supplies in here. There's that little that little baby snowflake. <laughs> uh, so uh, um, and we we did that tatted tea a few weeks ago, and this has all those funny bloops too, all the little Picos around the edge. So I figured, eh, this kind of goes with that. So we'll do that. Oh, you never could get the hang of the shuttle. Oh, you're better with needle, needle tatting, Benny. So I, I haven't tried needle tatting yet, but that's totally on my list. I want to do that. Oh, Lady uh, uh, Fontaine said, I haven't seen someone do a split ring slowly that, and it makes more so much more sense now. Oh, good. So that was the first time I was doing it. Um, yeah, and uh, just sometimes I don't understand all, like, what everyone means and stuff. Uh, so, so I'm happy to happy to give it a try here. All right, so we're basically doing the same thing, but bigger. And you know what? I'm going to switch back to how I'm more comfortable. Well, I'll show you this way, too. So I I am more comfortable, and this is how I learned. Apparently, this is a common way for people who have knit and crocheted <laughs> to, like, feel more comfortable, is by going with the thumb and the third finger, even though I think traditionally it's more um, thumb and first finger. But again, like I said, that kind of gives, like, I can feel it already. That gives me kind of, like, pain through my thumb. And... Um, uh, right here and through through my palm right there. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll jump back and try it a little bit later. But just for the split ring, I'm going to go where I'm a little bit more comfortable, which is my first and third finger. So I'm going to hold this kind of grouping that we just did. And we're going to make our second ring. So I'm going all the way around my hand and back to where I started. So I'm just going to kind of grip the beginning and the end there. Uh, we're working with that thread there still. And uh, let's see, it's 12... Pico three is the pattern. So we're gonna go under 
So I'm, I'm flipping my hand under, and then we're going underneath that thread, and we're actually sliding that thread past my finger. So this is the general double stitch, which is basically all of tatting. And then I'm going to come back over, so the shuttle is sliding past my thumb, and that makes like this this loop here. It's kind of hard to see because I'm doing white white on white, but we get a little loop. I'm going to loosen, the, I'm going to slack, make that, that thread slack by loosening my finger here, and I'm going to pull with my shuttle, and that's going to make the thread flip to the other side. And again, um, I have a video on specifically on that uh, that goes uh, a little bit more in detail and slower. Um, so I would take, take a look at that. And then the second half of the double stitch is over under. So we went we like we swooped our hand under and went under over. Now we're, now we're letting that thread dangle and we're going over and then under. And then that's making another one of those loops that we have to then flip to the shuttle thread and then we can slide it back to the rest of it. So that's that's one. So I'm going to cruise through these other uh, we need 12. So two. Three. So we're doing, it's really like two knots, but it's two halves of the one stitch. So it's the first half of the double stitch and the second half of the double stitch. Uh, four. And all of tatting is just double stitches, basically. Five. I better count. One, two, three, four, five. Again, just get some more slack in my loop. And off the shuttle. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, I did get new, <laughs> I did get new nail polish today. That's sort of a story. Uh, that was, it was kind of actually, it was a little bit annoying, uh, the nail polish thing, but I'll talk about that in a sec. 11, 12. Oh yeah, sorry Christy, I am using, I didn't show that, so I'm using some crochet thread. So this is uh, Aunt Lydia's uh, size 30. This is that, um, that thread that I got sort of on accident the other day at Joann's, but luckily it is, it is um, the same size recommended there. I suspect it'll probably, this is probably actual size, so it'll be probably close to that size. But yep, I'm just using some crochet thread, size 30. Okay, so that was 12. Now I need more slack here. All right, so now I need to do a pico. And a pico, which is one of these little, like, bloops, one of these little, you know, pokey loops. Oh, Becca said, dying art. Oh, there was a woman at your church that made these. Oh, for each newlywed until died at 97. Oh my gosh, Becky, that is amazing. <laughs> wow. What a gift. I mean, like, this is a time-consuming thing for sure. Okay, so Pico. Let's get more thread off the shuttle. So all you do for a Pico is start the next double stitch that's after the Pico. Um, and the letter P in this pattern is it means a pico. Sometimes it's just a dash. Uh, in that video I just did, it, it's a dash. So let's do a pico. So I'm actually, so it's 12 pico three. So I'm actually gonna start the three. So here's the first half of the three, but before I pull it all the way down, I'm gonna just leave a little gap. Uh, and that is that gap is what's gonna be the pico. So I'm gonna just finish the stitch, second half, and I can slide that down, and there's our little bloop. That's our pico. Um, okay, and then I also have my first double stitch done. So double stitch, um, that's one. Here's two. And three. And there we go. So that's the first half of our, um, our uh, split ring. <laughs> so this is a big one compared to the one that we just did. Now we gotta make the other half. So we do that with the second shuttle again. So I'm gonna just toss this over the back, toss my first shuttle so it's out of the way. 
Ooh, let's see, how do we do this? I think we'll come down here. I'm going to get a little bit more of a slack off of this ring, so my ring's a little bit bigger. Okay, so now this is where I'm going to switch back. So this is why people like this, I think, because um, I'm switching back to my thumb and forefinger, because what I need to do is I need to have access to to this thread here. And when I was with my third finger, I don't know, that got, got kind of weird. So I'm gonna go back to my first finger. So I'm going back to the start of this ring. I'm just gonna kind of make a big area here. And then now I'm going to um, do that other half of the split ring. So for that, I gotta go in reverse order, right? So instead of under order, under over, I gotta start with the second half, which is over under. Yeah, over, under, and I'm not flipping it this time, I'm just sliding it down. Maybe I need all my hands in here to start out with. Ooh, sliding it down, oh, it feels so weird. Okay, and then under, over, this is the second half, and just sliding it down. Okay, clearly I'm not comfortable doing this quite yet. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, all right, so that's one, two, I'm gonna be in like full concentration mode here. Two, second half of two, okay. Uh, three, three, I'm doing this right. Four. This is kind of a big, big split ring. Four. This looks like it takes a lot of patience. Yeah, Tiara, I am, <laughs> I am, I'm full of patience for this stuff. That's that's for sure. But yeah, I'm I'm just learning this. So this is this is an extra like brain struggle. Okay, I think I did four. Five. And I'm extra kind of slow motion for this too, so that's five. Six. Okay, seven. Getting a little faster. Seven, um, eight. Oh, you taught yourself five years ago? Oh my gosh, bling, that's awesome. Eight. I think maybe I made my ring too big. This is hard to hold. Eight. Um, <laughs> nine. Oh, I feel like I'm making this hard for myself somehow. Nine. <laughs> Definitely making this harder for myself. Um, let's get some more slack. Nine, ten. We're almost there though. Eleven. Okay, 12. Who got me interested in tatting? All right, I'm gonna do a pico now, and then we'll do the three, and then we're done with this, this side. So this will be like an upside down pico, weird, okay. So pico, so I don't know, I guess I gotta leave a little space down here. Well, I think that'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, I got a kit from my parents uh, for tatting about 10 years ago. They got it at some museum shop, um, they said. And I attempted to do it, and I thought it was the hardest thing ever. I was like, I'm going to figure this out without looking at any videos. I'm just going to do it by these instructions. I knew nothing about tatting. Um, I was excited about it because I had seen these shuttles before. 
and I'm like, oh, how does that's just magic? How does that work? Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to learn how to do it because of the magic, and uh, um, I I tried it that day and uh, sort of figured it out, but it was so difficult for me to get it. And then uh, about ten years later, which is about about two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, two months ago, we, uh, tatting, I don't know, it came up in one of my lives and I'm like, you know what? I have that kit. I should find that and we'll, we'll give it a try. Oh, um, we'll, we'll, um, we'll give it a try again. So I watched some videos, got the kit out and, uh, we gave it a go and now I freaking love it. I am just starting. Uh, Gwen said it is like magic. Yeah. I mean, it just looks magical. I know I was super slow there, but but it's because I'm doing a split ring, which is something I haven't done before, which is basically doing it all backwards. Um, but there we go. So here's our ring. I haven't pulled it tight yet, but you can see I have the 12 Pico uh, 3 over here, and I have the 12 Pico 3 over here. And it looks like it's going to work, which is going to end up being, it's going to end up being this. So this is 12, you know, imagine it without these guys, because I think that's, I suspect that the designer made this, and then was like, oh, I don't like those Picos, and then took it out of the instructions. I think that's kind of what happened. All right, so I'm going back to shuttle one, and that's what I'm going to pull to bring this, this ring together. Ooh, and it's just such a big ring. Actually, I don't think I've made a ring this big ever either. Get this pink thread out of the way. Oh, I think I'm twisting it a little bit. I think I uh, twisted the, let's just attempt to untwist this. Maybe I'm right. After this, it's going to go way smoother because this is my first time doing uh, um, the split rings and I'm still kind of wrapping my head around it. Um, but the rest of it, I think I'm, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, this is kind of silly and fun though. All right, I think we basically have it here. I mean, that looks that looks legitimate. So again, w instead of doing a ring where we ended up in the same place, we ended up on the on the opposite side. So that's kind of cool. I could see how that'd be valuable in um, in designs, like if you're doing a bracelet or a necklace or something. I can tell my my double stitches on the side that I know what I'm doing are way more uniform than these ones on this side, but um, no one's going to see that. That's just for my own kind of learning. And this little chain stitch is still kind of flopping around everywhere. But look, that's cool. So we did two. Oh, look, I'm holding it like right above, right above the thing. And it looks looks pretty good. Size wise, it is. Um, I think my this picture is a little bit bigger than than my thread, but not by much. Um, so it will be pretty close to this size when we're done. Oh, uh, Absolute Goblin says there's a cute daisy chain uh, uh, bookmark on Etsy that was great for learning split rings. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, so this is my first time, so I, I think I just need a whole pile more practice. But we are done with it now. Now I'm on to the next part, which is like these, cl these clover leaves here. So I think I have a better grasp on that. So this is going to be mostly done with my green shuttle, which is my shuttle number one in this case. Uh, so I'm going to just let shuttle number two is just going to dangle, dangle down there. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to just go on my thumb and um, third finger again, just because I am more comfortable doing it that way. All right. I believe this is a ring. Yep. So I'm going to wrap uh, the green thread around and back to the beginning there. Get some slack. Get some slack here. Make that bigger. Okay. Let's see. We need to do four Pico. Yeah, we're making this guy right here. So we're, we're going four Pico two, Pico two. That's, that's the next part. All right, so four, one, two, Oh, this feels so good to do again. I haven't done this in a little while. I did a lot over like the holidays and then I got working again and and haven't done it as much, but it just feels feels so comfy in my hands to do again. 
All right, that was four. Now my little Pico. I guess we'll make our Picos that big. Pico, one, two. Oops, second half, two. Give me slack. Um, oh, that was supposed to be a Pico. That was a little farther than I thought. Um, two. Four Pico to here's the Pico and then another two. One two. Okay, there we are. So this is our, our next ring. So all I have to do is pull the thread and that will close that ring up. I'm just making it smaller, smaller, smaller. And there we are. So a little tiny baby ring there. So all of these little um, picos, we're actually going to use them to connect to other other parts. So sometimes they're decorative, like on all these these guys out here, they're decorative. But sometimes, and it's hard to see, sometimes they are just where you hook a couple things together. Like, you know, like this ring here is connected to this ring here with, with a pico that it's, that it's sharing. Okay, um, there we go. That's that ring. What is next? Okay, Pico, or oh, two, and then I'm joining to the Pico of the previous ring. Okay, so that'll be this. Okay, let's just start there. We're doing another ring. Okay, so two, one, two, and then we're going to join to the previous ring. So now that, that Pico, that last Pico that we did there, we're actually going to do a join. So I'm going to put my, my thread here behind that Pico so I can see that it so I can see the thread through the Pico, and then I'm gonna go into that Pico and dig out that thread with the hook of my shuttle here. And then we're gonna put my shuttle all the way through. And then we're gonna pull that thread back. So now we've attached ourselves to that, that other Pico that we did earlier. So that's called a join. So we're joining. All right, and then four. Two, three, four. So this thread doesn't seem as like smooth, flowy. Like it's not, like it feels like it's one in a grab to the rest of the thread and it's curling up and stuff a little bit too. So I don't know. It's not as nice as. I guess I was just working with that little 12 weight sewing thread that seemed a little bit smoother. Okay, so four. Okay, now a VSP, that means a very small Pico. Um, so let's do one of those and then it's three. So just smaller than what we did before. I don't know, that's pretty small. One, that's about the same size, oh well. Two, normal pico this is this is quite this is a bigger ring a lot going on with this I gotta make sure I don't get lost in the pattern yeah it's about a good size two and my ring's getting awfully small here let's make that bigger there we go which means I gotta get more slack here one oh and the other half of two Okay, so Pico to another Pico. Okay, and two. Now Pico three. Okay, let me count again. Pico two. 
Pico to it's like Pika Pika. <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm like yeah on the I'm Pika chewing. Um, Pico and three. Pico. Okay, one. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm <laughs> in like full concentration mode. Yeah, I'm using Aunt Lydia's uh, extra fine size 30 crochet thread. I'll show you guys again. Okay, so that was three. There we go. It's it's um, just this crochet thread uh, extra fine um, 30. So at, I, I got it from Joanne. So uh, they have, here I'll stick it. I think you can see it like right there. Um, they have um, like 10, I think is the main size, which is a little bit bigger than this. And then they have like 20 and 30 there. I was actually looking for it for a different project and I didn't buy the right stuff. So now, now I'm using it for, for tatting. Okay, so now I need to make a very small pico and then four. Okay. That's gonna be my very small pico. One. Let's get more slack again. Two. Two, three, four. Pico two. And then then that's it. Pico. And one more. Okay, so that is our big honk and row. So look, it's this is so it always starts like in a in a row like this. And I think this is probably where it looks like needle tatting is when you got your long your long row. So that was our whole thing. It was four, a little pico, then three, pico two, pico two, pico three, uh, very small pico, four, pico two. So all, all that in a row, but we're doing it on a ring. So now all I have to do is pull and that should all get sucked up into another ring <laughs> so there we go that's what that ended up as that's kind of fun so i think that's this this whole contraption right in the middle there all right that looks legit i think yeah and now we um we're on the last row here so that's another little baby small one um so we do another ring so going around in a circle more slack more slack um two I should be maybe checking off the pattern as I get done but I think I can figure out where I left off one two okay so now we're going to be joining to the last pico of the previous ring so that's this one right here so again I'm putting my this thread behind that pico where I can see the thread peak peek on through right there and I'm going to dig it on out. There we go. And stick my whole shuttle through it. Oh, out of, out of here, guy. There we go. And then I'm going to pull that thread back again. So now, now I'm attached. I've attached myself to that Pico. So that's now a join. Uh, two more. Two join. Two Pico four. Okay, two one, two, and we'll do a pico. Pico. A little bit bigger. A little bit smaller. There. Pico. Two, pico four. Okay, one. Two. Okay, let's pull that into a ring. Okay, 
Okay, there we are. So we've made this little uh, clover leaf, basically. So you can kind of, kind of see that those these three together. So we got our like little starting circles, and then this little clover leaf in the middle there is is where we're at now. So if we set it set it down, that's that's uh, what we got so far. All right. Um, R W that means reverse work. Uh, is that that hard to to learn? Uh, Re is asking. So. Uh, I thought it was initially, but there's there's two basic principles that if you get that, then it's totally your golden after that. And that is the general motion of the shuttle where you go over, under, then under, over. That's that's a double stitch. Um, I do have a video on that over. Um, I don't have, I can't organize my, my, like I don't have the like playlists yet on my profile. So it's kind of annoying to find it. I might do a, a video where I just like link all the videos, but uh, so that's the double stitch. So go check out the double stitch. Oh, I think that's actually my pinned videos. And then the second concept is the flipping of the loop. So you actually have to flip the loop from, from. I mean, I can I can show you that. But uh, you're flipping it from one string to the other string. Uh, I know that doesn't make sense when I just say that. But uh, just, just um, I have the video of like the thing you need to know uh, if you want a tat, <laughs> and it's about flipping the loop. So the, once you have those two concepts, then then it, you got it. You 100% got it at that point. So that's literally all you need to know, <laughs> and then you got it. Um, okay, uh, reverse work. So that means I just go opposite. So I just flipped my my work around. Okay, and now I'm going to chain three. So a chain, instead of doing a ring, I am now just stitching directly onto the thread of the second shuttle. So that's that's the chain. So I'm gonna just get more out here. Get everything kind of held and lined up. Okay, so I'm going to do, so now instead of going all the way around my hand, I'm just gonna tie it off on or I'm just gonna like wind it on my finger there a little bit um, so I'm still it's still not a ring I'm still just kind of going down down the row um, okay so three. Oh, so now here's here's another thing um, for this particular design it, it says okay these instructions are for both shuttles but for the shuttle at the top of the page this one in all the chains which is what we're doing now Picos are placed every two double stitches. So that's like all these little bloops were, were putting those in. You know, we're doing two stitches and then a bloop, which is a pico. Um, so we're adding that in. So I got to remember because that's not written in here. I have to remember that extra, extra direction. Okay, so chain three. Oh, it doesn't look like I do it there. So I do chain three and then a the join. And then I, it's then 10, 10 double stitches. So in between each of those two I gotta add add um, add one. Oh, so and for a chain we've been doing rings with with our shuttles and so I needed a bunch of extra slack but now I don't need that anymore so I gotta wind it back up a little bit um, I have too much slack alright let's let's get situated again alright so now I have the pink shuttle thread on my hand and I'm, I'm working with the green shuttle but I'm the pink shuttle thread is what's on my hand so this is a chain now, which is the same thing as a double stitch. It's just on the one thread instead of around a ring. So, all right, let's do three. One, get it right down next to where we were. Other half of the first. Did I flip that loop? I must have. One. situated here two so here's the flipping of the loop uh, you start with uh, you know a loop on this side and I need it to flip to the other other thread so that's that's the flip I know that probably didn't look like much but that's that's the important thing definitely check out that video I did on flipping the loop all right one two three and now I'm going to join to our original uh, 
little Pico there. Oh, I might have flipped this around. Yeah, I think I did. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's go right there, uh, do a join. So I need to dig, dig the thread out of that Pico. This is the benefit of those ones with little crochet hooks on the end, but I, I like I like these ones. With the little hooks. Um, all right. That is one. Need more slack. Alright, now we need to do ten chains with picos in between every two. Are you finishing the Splendid Sampler Bag? Oh, Mix a Couple Nights. So Robin, no, I'm going to pick that up next month. So I'm going to work on the Splendid Sampler the fourth week of the month, the first couple days. And I've just been itching to do some of this stuff, so that's that's why we're doing this too. So every once in a while we'll do it the whole week. But yep, we're going to... We did. We got pretty far, though. I just basically have to do the embroidery. All right, so... One... two and so here's where we're putting picos in between each one one two pico Oop, almost dropped my shuttle three four pico Five, six, get more slack. Oh, you made J JW made in time for tatting. Yep. <laughs> oh, you found me a few weeks ago and became obsessed with tatting. Oh, thank you so much for the new hobby. Oh, that makes me so happy. This is my new hobby too, and I am just freaking loving it. Um, it, it's, it's just so little and cute and uh, I don't know, it's magic. That's why I like, that's, that's kind of my, my thing with all crafts. If I feel like I've figured out like some secret to life while doing it, then, then, uh, then I like it. Um, all right. So that was six Pico, a little bit bigger Pico, six. Um, seven, Pico. I'll get more consistent with this as we go. I feel like I'm not doing a great job at getting these all the same and I feel like I'm just getting into all this again tonight, but we'll get there. I, I'm really only going to work on this tomorrow um, before we'll be switching it up again for the for uh, next week, we'll be doing, starting the ABC embroideries. So I'm excited for that. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is 10. So for 10, we should have four Picos in the middle. That makes, that makes sense. So, all right, there we are. What else? Oh, that's it. Now we reverse work again. So we flip it this way. That's reversing our work. And now we need to make a ring, um, but it's going to be with the second shuttle now, I believe. Or is it? I suppose it's not. Reverse work. No, it's not with the other shuttle. So I'm back to my green shuttle. So we need to do a ring. There's a cute little chain, though. That's cute. Uh, ring. So I'm going around my hand again. Oh, you, you used to do this? Yeah, it's fun. Oh, <laughs> you started a job at a carbon warehouse and it's not safe for your white lace making. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking not. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, that, that'd be a little bit of a problem. You'll just have to stitch with, um, you'll have to do like pretty gray thread and black threads. Um, all right, reverse work. Okay, three, one, two, three. Okay, and 
joined to the very small pico of r ring two. I think that's up here. That's this one. Okay. Yeah, way up here we're going. All right, that makes sense. I think that's where we're going, right? Yeah. Is it here? I'm gonna just trust it. Let's go right there. Oops. Try that again. All right, we're joining, so I'm bringing my thread all the way through there. Okay. Um, and then three. That was easy. One. Alright, let's pull that little ring. Little tiny baby ring. Alright, and then we reverse work again. Because we're going to be doing another chain. Oh, hey, look, it's coming together, though. It's, uh, we just did, like, this is that chain, and then that little bloop is right there. Okay. Alright. Um, we'll do chain. I think that's where we'll stop too. We'll do the, the chain, um, pico, and then two, and then I think we'll, we'll call it there for the evening. So <laughs> I've been doing this for about an hour. Um, I will be doing this tomorrow night too. We'll just be continuing this pattern and obviously I will not be getting done based on what I got done today, but Hey, I'm pretty happy with this so far. Um, I'm still learning. So this is just fun for me just to just the act of doing this right now is just making su me super happy okay i gotta wind got too much thread off the green one again let's wind wind her back up okay i think that's good all right um so now we got to do the chain 10 with the picos in the middle again so one Not very smooth at making these picodes yet, but I'll get there. Three, four, five, six. Get more slack. Oh, I'll be going live at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And maybe I'll make a, a little, um, what are those, like one of those event things, so you can just click on there and be notified. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, Pico. So 8.30 p.m. Central, Central Time. I'm on uh, every evening, Monday through Friday. So I guess just tomorrow then, yeah. Seven, eight, Pico. That's nine, and here's my ten. Okay, and then what? Oh, another pico. All right, another pico and another two. Well, that's what I've been doing this whole time, so let's do that. Pico. Okay, so that's um, where we left off there. There. Here, let me just, <laughs> I have my, so this is, this is what we'll be working on uh, on Monday is we'll be starting our little alligator embroidery, but I'm just going to get this out so I can see this on a darker surface here. I don't really have a good dark surface, but uh, there we go. And let's just look at this guy again. So it's coming. We did the first little, um, just trying to get this to lay flat here for a second. There. 
uh, we got our, again, we're right here. So we have about this much done. <laughs> Uh, we got our funny little start, but we did get to do those split rings. And that's the first time I've done that. Um, and then uh, we did this little uh, cluster, this, what do they call it here? A clover leaf with the, these two. Th that looks pretty, well, a little wonky, but we'll get better those as we go because they're, they're all over. Um, and then uh, some of these bloopy chains on the outside with these little cute little picos. And those are looking awfully darling. So let's, let me just show you guys close up. So it is looking pretty cute, I do have to say. <laughs> all those, I, I'm glad I went with the one with all the picos because that is really kind of sweet. That's a nice little extra bit, um, bit to it. So I'm excited. This is going to come together and be really pretty, I think. And I'm going to just, uh, when we're done, I'm going to stitch it. It'll probably sit on the back of my, um, I'm going to just stitch it on the back of, of here. This is my bag that's intended for tatting supplies. So I'll just be able to know because <laughs> I got tatting on the outside. Yeah, I think that white's going to look okay. Okay on this kind of off-white um, pattern. It's just going to look textural. So I think that's great. Oh, Lady Fontaine says, you got so much done. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you think so. I'm still, I'm still definitely getting used to it all. Um, I can already tell that my next steps are going to be better. Like I'm pulling this tighter and... Uh, We'll, we'll be a little clumsy, but then the second half will actually, will, will look nicer, I think. But I, I think it's turning out really kind of cute. I'm excited we worked on this. So this is a suggestion from Anne over on um, YouTube and, and Facebook a few, I don't know, a week or so ago. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that looks good. And like I said, I, I didn't even know what to do with the first instructions because it was a split ring and I had never done those before. So I got to try something um, different, something I hadn't done done uh today so yay i'm excited so all right uh oh yeah ann says yay tatting yay <laughs> for sure uh i'm really happy with this and it's just fun to to stitch with the different color shuttles and stuff too i'm a little nervous about um how my measurements are going to go but that's going to be kind of fun to see too um you know because I, I talked about i did all the measuring just to see how much thread i should put on each shuttle it'll be interesting when we're done to see how accurate that turned out. So I am going to stitch this Friday. That's tomorrow uh, from 8.30 uh, central PM to 9.30 PM. Uh, maybe we'll stay a little longer. We'll see. I would like to finish this. I know I'm not going to finish that tomorrow, but maybe I might have to sneak on uh, for, you know, a little bit of Saturday to do, to work on it too. Cause that, I just am excited to be tatting again. So I don't know. We'll see. So keep an eye out for Saturday if I'm, if I'm on there as well. <laughs> All right, you guys. So that is it for the evening. Uh, thanks again uh, for joining me. I, I'm loving working on these fun new like little projects. Oh yeah, and last night, last night we used that um, that speed weave tool to uh, add a patch to my glove here. Just been a fun, <laughs> fun couple days. And then the sewing of the splendid sampler too. And I, I had really fun with that design. So what a nice week. And, uh, and tomorrow, yeah, we'll be, not tomorrow, uh, next week, Monday, we'll be starting the alphabet uh, stitch along. So we'll be starting with the letter A. Uh, we'll be doing letter A for the first week and then letter B. And then it'll be in the brighter of the month again, you guys. We're into February just about, <laughs> which is crazy. So, all right. I will see all y'all tomorrow. Have a lovely evening. Good night.